Today, we're going to be talking about PCOS and really uncover the truth about PCOS. And this actually affects everyone, even though we are talking about PCOS. So hang tight and I'll show you how this affects everyone. So if there's part of you that's thinking, I don't know what PCOS is, or I don't even know if this has anything to do with me. It does. It all does. Trust me on this one. And let's dive right in. So PCOS, if you ever have acne, weight gain, facial hair, hair loss, irregular periods, fertility issues, if this describes you in any way, even if only part of it describes you, or you know someone who's dealing with this, PCOS may be the diagnosis that they're dealing with. PCOS stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome. And even the name, the name sounds like it has to do with cysts and ovaries, polycyst. I'm not really sure. How does this have anything to do with it? Well, guess what? Even though the name is PCOS, it actually doesn't have much to do with your ovaries or cysts in your ovaries, which I'm going to explain. And the saddest thing is that women come to my office every day and they're given this diagnosis by their GYN or their well-meaning PCP, and they're just handed off a whole bunch of medication. And they're like, just take these meds and everything will be fine. And they're never explained to them what's actually going on. Now, as I said earlier, some of you might say, this doesn't apply to me. I don't have PCOS. I'm not the age of fertility. But when you realize what I'm talking about as I get through this, you're going to understand that this is about a serious hormonal imbalance that causes havoc in the body. And for some women, it will cause PCOS. For some women, it can cause menopause-like symptoms. For some men, it can cause low testosterone. So what I'm talking about, when I'm going to get to the root of what's going on, you're going to see that it applies to everyone. So if you've had these symptoms or you've had them when you were younger or you know someone in your life who had these symptoms, this podcast is super important because so many women get this diagnosis and are not being told that there is actually something that they can do about it, something that they can do to get rid of it. And if you have any type of hormonal imbalances, you should pay attention here as well because hormonal imbalances don't just happen. There are things that we can do to help them and there are things that we did to cause them and there are things that we can do to help prevent them or fix them. So before I jump in, I always want to let you know how to reach me and my team. So I always say, if you're watching this live, if you're watching this live, drop the word live. And if you're watching in a replay, drop the word replay. And I still want you to do that. But I also want to encourage you to ask questions. You know, if you're watching me live, I'm going to try to take a look and see if there's questions live. But if it's on the replay and you have a question, go ahead and ask right here because we look at it and then we'll answer you. Maybe if it's private, we'll answer you privately. Sometimes I like to answer in front of everyone because a lot of people have the same questions as you. So while I'm talking, throw your questions in. Even if it's not related to PCOS, just go ahead and throw it in. Let's see what you got. Wherever platform you're watching us on, type the word change anywhere, and that will let us know that you want the show notes. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure that you like and subscribe, please. And if you are listening on the podcast, as always, my hair is fabulous, and I'm wearing the stethoscope my wife bought me, which is red and awesome. I'm wearing a black fleece, and that's all you're missing because the rest of the information is going to be the same. You're just missing my fancy microphone. If you're not following us on Instagram, please be sure to do so because we're funny. And um, yeah, we try to entertain you on Instagram. So follow us on Instagram. And as always, if this speaks to you or someone that you love, share it with the people that you love. Let them become the game changers in their life. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Efrat Lamandre. Everyone calls me E or Dr. E. And I invented the new method where we empower people to realize that their symptoms are not in their head because you always knew there was a better way. So let's jump in. Wherever you are, join the conversation. If you're watching this on replay, ask your questions. Say whatever you want to say. We will read it. So let's jump into PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. It affects 5 to 10% of all women. That's a huge amount, 5 to 10% of all women. PCOS symptoms include, you don't have to have all of them, they include irregular or heavy periods, acne, facial hair, scalp hair loss, increased belly fat, increased levels of testosterone, and 
it is very connected to infertility, having difficulty, having children, getting pregnant. Now, conventional medicine usually looks at PCOS as a gynecological issue, but it's way more complex than that. And PCOS is actually not a thing. It's a syndrome. It's a spectrum of things. You can have just one of these symptoms. You can have all of these symptoms or anywhere in between. So maybe you have just the facial hair or just the heavy periods or the irregular periods or just the increased belly fat. You can be anywhere on the spectrum. You don't have to have all of them to potentially have PCOS. Now, here's where it gets a little sticky. And the reason why I decided to dedicate this week to this topic, because so many women come to me and are diagnosed with this issue and they're devastated. And they come in and said, well, my UIN just said I have PCOS. Here's the medication that I was given. They're either given something called spironolactone for facial hair, or they give them metformin to help them ovulate again or maybe they give them birth control to regulate their period or all three, but they're never really told why it's happening and what they can do to fix it. So they get this diagnosis, they get this medication and they're completely un disempowered to do anything about it. Like there's no conversation of what we could do about it. And I, and I want to dispel that. I want to empower women everywhere to know that there's something they could do about it. They're coming to my office devastated with a scary sounding diagnosis with a pill or two that they've, and they've never been told what to do. It's usually diagnosed with an ultrasound of the ovaries of the uterus, as well as some blood work to see if there's elevated testosterone. And they said, here's some meds. And they're never taught why it's happened, never advised. So today we're going to uncover the truth about PCOS because people, women with PCOS struggle right? They're struggling with weight gain, hair growth, acne. They're getting cosmetic treatments. They're going to the dermatologist for skin cream. They're going for facial hair removal. Women who with PCOS are more likely to develop serious health problems like type two diabetes and high blood pressure, problems with the heart, blood vessels, uterine cancer. And women with PCOS often have a hard time with fertility, have a hard time with getting pregnant. So this is a really big deal. And this is what I said, it gets, it gets a little tricky. This is the scoop. Even though we're talking about women and sex hormones and periods and testosterone and having babies, the cause of PCOS actually has nothing to do with these sex hormones. The cause is actually not a GYN issue. The issue with PCOS, the real issue with PCOS is actually insulin, insulin and insulin resistance, which means it's not a testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, sex hormone problems. It's a carb and sugar problem usually. And I'll get to some exceptions later, but I want you to start thinking of PCOS like a pre-diabetes. So if you have PCOS, you have an insulin problem. So if I told you today, Hey, you're on the verge of getting diabetes you kind of know what to do, right? You're like, oh man, don't give me medications yet. Let me do my thing. Let me start exercising. Let me remove my carbs. Let me change up my diet. You're going, you know what you need to do. If I told you today that you have prediabetes, you know what you would need to do to kind of prevent that, not to be on those meds. So it's the very same thing that you need to do if you are getting diagnosed with PCOS. It's the same thing. I'm going to explain why. Again, diagnose PCOS. You're going to say, hey, I have an irregular period. Or, hey, I have acne. Or, hey, I have skin darkening around the neck. That's another symptom. Or, I really have trouble losing weight. But the problem isn't the skin. It isn't the acne. It's actually the insulin. It starts with insulin. Insulin is a hormone that helps us balance our blood sugar. Here's how it goes. If you haven't heard me talk about this yet on my TikTok, go ahead and listen because I talk about this all day long. But here's how it goes. This is how insulin works. You eat something, it gets broken down into glucose. Insulin, its job is like Uber. It picks up the glucose, brings it to the cell. And the cell says, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. But then we keep eating more food, more and more food. The insulin picks it up and brings it to the cell. And the cell's like, yeah, no thanks. I'm good. I'm full. You just hooked me up a minute ago. I don't eat anymore. That's insulin resistance. The cell is like, no, thank you. It's resistant to insulin. So what does the body do? The body's like, wait a minute, 
we can't get this glucose in. Let's bring in more insulin. So the body in trying to compensate increases the amount of insulin. So you're eating all this food, the body, the cells aren't taking it in. So more insulin is made. It's called hyperinsulinemia. And this is the reason that everything, it causes havoc in your issues. So what does it do? It increases your testosterone. It tells your ovaries, hey, increase testosterone. It increases your testosterone, which messes with your skin and messes with your hair and messes with your nails. The testosterone then signals it to mess with your estrogen and your progesterone. So your periods are off. And because these hormones are off, you're going to have fertility issues. So top down, insulin is the issue because we're eating a certain way. The body tries to react and compensate by bringing more insulin. This excess insulin has an effect. It increases testosterone, which causes the hair, the face, and it causes fertility issues and period issues. So the problem is not down here, right? With the period issues and the fertility issues, the problem is up here. And if we fix it up here, we will fix it downstream. So for most of us, and I'll tell you why I say most of us a little bit, but for most of us, that means we need to change what we eat. If you keep eating the problematic food and keep increasing that insulin, you're going to continue having the symptoms of PCOS. Here's the bottom line. If you're diagnosed with PCOS, you have been diagnosed with a pre-diabetes. You've been diagnosed with too much insulin, which means your treatment is not to take the pill to regulate your period. It's not to take the metformin to help you ovulate. It's not to take the spironolactone. I'm not telling you not to take it, but it's not going to fix it. The treatment is to change your lifestyle. You're going to start with intermittent fasting. If you haven't watched any of my episodes on intermittent fasting, I don't know what you're waiting for. Go watch them. Basically, I don't want this live to be too long, but I'm a huge fan of 16-8, meaning you fast for 16 and you eat for eight, and that really helps your body become insulin sensitive. Again, if you're interested, just find one of my episodes on it, and I walk you through the whole thing. Low carb diet. Now, you know what I mean by low-carb diet because inevitably some wise guy is going to say, even broccoli is our carb. Yeah, I know broccoli is a carb. I am not worried that you're going to eat too much broccoli, okay? I'm really not worried about that. So when I say low-carb, you know what I mean. Get rid of the junky stuff. Get rid of the refined sugars and the starchy stuff. Bring it down because when you eat that, it just causes a spike in insulin, and we know insulin is the problem. Eat the green stuff. Eat the yellow stuff, eat the, the purple stuff, eat the rainbow. When I say that, I don't mean Skittles and I don't mean candy. I need you to go into the grocery store, into the vegetable section and eat every color. They're full of phytonutrients and they will help your body become more insulin sensitive. So let me, I, you know, I always forget to click one of these things. So intermittent fasting, low carb, you don't want, you know, I don't mean low broccoli and eat the rainbow, please, 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 please. So for some of you who are listening to this, it's really going to hit home. You kind of know that your diet's not been on point and you know, you got diagnosed with PCOS and this resonates and you're going to say, yeah, I'm going to, you know, clean up my diet and this will help you. But this is what I was alluding to earlier. There are a few of you listening out there. And I run into patients like this all the time who are like, listen, I'm a pretty clean eater. I don't have a weight issue. I don't really eat junk food and I still have PCOS. So what's going on here? Why do I have PCOS? I, I don't eat the junky stuff. It's still an insulin issue for many of you, but for those of you who are not struggling with weight and who are eating pretty clean and still have PCOS, it's still a hyperinsulinemia. It's still more insulin. It's just that the root cause may not be from your nutrition. Let me tell you what I mean by that. For some of you who have PCOS and it, you don't think it's from your nutrition, it may be from chemicals, the environment that's affecting your microbiome. If you don't know what microbiome is, please watch my episodes on microbiome because it's a really big deal. The microbiome is everything. It's basically the world inside your belly has good bacteria, bad bacteria, and it really needs to be balanced. 
So if something happened externally, you were exposed to something or you had a whole bunch of antibiotics in your life and now your microbiome is messed up, that can cause the raised insulin, which can still trigger that whole cascade I was talking about. So it may not be from your nutrition that got you here, but the answer is still going to be nutrition and supplements to get you out of this mess. So either way, we're looking at similar exit strategies from this mess. We may have just gotten to the insulin issue a little bit differently. If you have 10 women with PCOS, you're going to have 10 different reasons of how they got this elevated insulin and how they got here. And so you're going to need 10 different kinds of treatments. And that's the beautiful thing about functional medicine, right? It's not a one size fits all. It's really taking the time to hear the triggers and how we got here. It's truly, truly customized medicine. So I know I talked a lot. I'm going to give you two examples of patients to kind of help you understand what I mean about causes and treatment. Let's start with one that's a more typical patient of PCOS. She was in her thirties. She was trying to get pregnant. And she said that in the past few years, she's gained some weight about 15 pounds over the past few years. And her periods have always been irregular as far as she remembers. Um, she also remembers, she also complains of like hair, a little bit of extra facial hair on her cheeks. She had it lasered. She's seeing derm for her acne. It's kind of controlled. And she said that about four years ago, she was put on the pill for her period issues. But now she's got off the pill. She still has these period issues and she's having trouble getting pregnant. Now, remember, it's not the pill that messed up her period. It was to begin with. So her endocrinologist, thank goodness, had the presence of mind to tell her to come visit me. So we talked about kind of what's going on with her and she wasn't a terrible eater. She, you know, and I'm saying this on purpose because many of you are going to, you know, say, well, I don't, you know, eat McDonald's, I don't eat pizza. Her average meal was in the morning. She had an oatmeal or a bagel at lunch. She'd have some sort of sandwich on whole wheat bread. And then an evening, a pasta or rice with some veggies and chicken, an occasional glass of wine, right? Not terrible, but it was enough of a carb situation to drive up her insulin. So with her, we started with nutrition. We put her on an elimination diet. We re lowered her refined carb intake. We started her on intermittent fasting and we got her moving. She lost the extra 15 pounds. Her periods regulated, her skin cleared up and she got pregnant. It was awesome. But then we have a completely different type of patient, right? Who has PCOS and who needed a different treatment. She was younger. She didn't have excess weight and she wasn't trying to get pregnant. She came in for irregular periods and she was worried that the irregular periods in the future when she got married might create a situation for her fertility. Um, she, however, told us a lot about her GI issues. She was lactose intolerant. And in the past, she had a lot of UTIs and infections, and she's taken a lot of antibiotics in her life. So with this person, it was, as we were talking, it became, became clear that her issue was more about her gut microbiome. And again, if you don't know what that is, go on YouTube or listen to any of my podcasts. I talk about microbiome all the time. So with her, we did a, and again, both patients had unstable hormones. So they both are PCOS some of the imbalanced hormones, but the root cause was a little different. So with her, we did a stool test right away. We discovered that there was an imbalance in her microbiome, something called dysbiosis. So we knew we needed to really focus on that. So we cleaned up her diet a little bit, but with her, it was more about probiotics. We definitely took her off dairy because anything that irritates her belly is going to mess up her microbiome. And dairy itself is full of hormones and we already have hormone issues. Thank you very much. And her periods regulated and her face cleared up. Two different women, both a PCOS, both with elevated testosterone, two totally different treatments. Neither required medicine. Really important. So again, I'm not telling you not to take it. You know me. I'm not against medicine. I'm just saying find out what's going on first. Other causes of insulin um, elevations, uh, toxins, microbiome, and I always like to empower you guys with some supplements. Now, remember, supplements are supplemental. They are to be added on top of other treatments, not instead of. So you cannot keep eating Pizza Hut and McDonald's and then take the supplements and wish for a miracle. It's not going to happen.
Okay. So some supplements that really, really, really help. One is called inositol, which helps the cells become better to responding to insulin. So it increases insulin sensitivity and decreases that resistance. So it helps, right? Because insulin is the problem. Vitamin D, which is also amazing for insulin sensitivity. And there's a huge correlation between low vitamin D and insulin resistance. So we're going to try to fix that. And omega-3 because it's super anti-inflammatory and just about everyone should be on it. So to recap, PCOS is more than a GYN issue. And I'm hoping for those of you who may not be struggling with PCOS, but are struggling with other hormonal imbalances, that you're understanding that it's not usually just the isolated hormonal problem, right? So for men, if you have low testosterone, that's not usually the problem. And for women, if your hormones are imbalanced, that's not the problem. The problem is higher up. And often insulin is the culprit and you have to get to that root cause. There's so much to do and you might need a guide. So if you want to work with us, this is how you join us. Just find us at the new method on every platform, Instagram, YouTube, everywhere except for Twitter, because I have too much to say. Twitter is just not long enough for me. And wherever you try to reach us, message us, send us a message, private message. We will get back to you. And we are here to help you become the game changer in your life because you always knew there was a better way. I look forward to seeing you guys next week. See you soon. Thanks for watching this week's video on PCOS. Don't forget to like and subscribe and be sure to check out last week's video on your body's natural ability to heal. I'll talk to you guys soon.